The one word most often used to describe Garbo was luminous. William Daniels had progressed so far, he was now one of the finest cameramen in the world. This is the single most important person in her artistic career, I believe, except for the directors of these films and Garbo herself. Daniels was not only a wonderful photographer and a, a subtle one, but a man who had a tremendous personal delicacy and sensitivity to her and who made her feel comfortable. Daniels became so interested in Garbo's face, he said that her eyes reminded him of his grandmother, who had a very special feeling for life. He said, I never thought I would see someone with a kind of sadness in her eyes the way I saw in Garbo's eyes. I felt I had to capture that, I had to, to bring that forth. And of course, the way he did it was with lighting. It was this exceptionally glamorous image of Garbo created by the studio, which resulted in her being hounded by the press. She was very concerned about intrusions into her personal life. And I think you have to put yourself in her position. She went from Stockholm to a global film star in the matter of just a couple of years, and she was in her early 20s. And I don't think anybody had gotten the kind of attention and uh, created the kind of intrusions into her life that it, uh, up until that point. Perhaps as a result, Garbo tried to distance herself from studio life. She wasn't willing to join the group. My grandfather selected the 4th of July as his birthday. It wasn't his real birthday. His birthday was later in July. But to be a good American, he picked the 4th of July as his birthday, and everyone's attendance on the 4th of July was required at the studio. Miss Garbo didn't want to come on the 4th of July. She had her own ideas how to spend the 4th of July. My grandfather didn't understand. He thought it was just a matter of sending more flowers or maybe upping her salary a little bit or making her happy with the choice of cinematographer or co-star. Garbo didn't want to be part of the family. She wanted to be left alone. The one person she did want was Moritz Stiller, but he had returned to Sweden. Garbo was preparing to shoot this scene for Wild Orchids when she was handed a telegram. Stiller had died. Where Garbo had adapted to the studio system, Stiller had been beaten by it. She would treasure his memory for the rest of her life. Stiller's death led to a visit to Sweden. Garbo traveled under an assumed name, but word soon got out. We får övernatta i Göteborg, vilket vi också var tvungna att göra. Och när vi kom ut på kajen där och skulle ha en bil till hotellet, så var det en flicka som hoppar upp på, på, på bilen och skrek Garbo, Garbo hade sönder alla glaser ut och allt gjort. At long last, she was reunited with her mother. Garbo came back to MGM in 1929 to find it in a state of upheaval. Most of her European friends, like Lars Hansen and Victor Seestrom, were returning home. The studio was finally going over to sound. It put fear in a lot of hearts. They began looking over their actors and actresses, who would be able to make it, who wouldn't. And they finally made a film in which people were going to talk, and they were giving samples of their stars, giving the opportunity what they would sound like. Oh, gentle Romeo, if thou dost love, pronounce it faithfully. In this film, every MGM star was represented in some form, except Garbo. Here are Norma Shearer and John Gilbert. Lady, by yonder blessed moon, I swear, which tips of silver all these fruit tree tops. Very good, Jack. Remarkable. Really, I, I was surprised. I, 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 I don't mean I was surprised. John Gilbert was famous for his naturalistic playing. 
But in talking pictures, he reverted to a theatrical technique which movie audiences found laughable. MGM would eventually drop him. Amidst all the chaos of the transition to sound, how would MGM handle Garbo's next picture? They squeezed one more silent out of Garbo. It showed silent film technique at its zenith. As a silent film, The Kiss was given a musical score and sound effects. It was the last silent the studio made. 